Hi there guys, it's uh, Baltic Bushcraft here again. Sorry, ladies and gents, shouldn't forget the ladies as well. As you can see, I'm um, out in the forest again, taking advantage of a few hours uh, quiet to try and get some fresh air uh, and explore a bit more. Uh, it's an area of, a, as you can see, very thick forest and uh, it's an area I've been slowly working my way around over the last few months. Uh, as you can see it's predominantly uh, pine but what we also have is um, lots of little logging trails and fire breaks um, in all directions. Now in one sense of course that's a good thing it means you can make pretty good progress through the forest and uh, provided you keep a, a careful watch or a careful note of which direction you're heading in um, it means you can cover large distances and not get lost. However, as soon as you forget one turning you've made, you come to a crossroads like this, you know, turn around and look at the view, forget which way it was you were facing, then it's extremely easy to get lost. In fact, the whole reason why I found this, this area, very unspoiled area, was that um, I got lost on a previous hike. Now, luckily I managed to uh, find my way back and I also you know, took note of the places I'd seen along the way and there were lots of interesting little hills and things worth um, worth exploring. So anyway, I'm keeping on in this straight direction, not diverging from the path at the moment. Um, but uh, as you can see, I've got some, well, some kit you haven't seen before. Uh, the backpack I have on, the little rucksack, is a Dutch Army rucksack and on the front as well, clipped to it, is this um, Dutch Army well, it's a kind of a stuff sack stroke duffel bag. Um, all I've got in this is, is a sleeping bag. I'm just testing this out, really. The uh, rucksack on my back is pretty small. I guess it's only about 25, 30 litres most. A couple of litres more on each, on each side. Um, and I got it yesterday. I've been after one for a while, even though I've heard um, you know, varying opinions of them. Now the reason I got it though is I'm not a very big guy. I'm only like 170 centimeters tall. That's sort of five seven. And uh, this pack sits extremely high, high up between the shoulder blades. There's no, in fact, it, it's so high up. There's no waist belt at all. It sits up higher than that. It's a bit like some of those uh, uh, Rhodesian. Uh, bush packs, you know, from the Rhodesian Zimbabwe War. But anyway, <clears throat> that's a that's a, another issue. Um, I like it that it sits up high like that. Um, when you're a smaller guy like me, often uh, many Bergens are kind of oversized, and you end up uh, carrying way too much stuff. It's not that you can't carry it; it's just that it becomes very very uncomfortable um, if you're not got a long back. Um, the other reason why I I got it was that uh, ski season's approaching, cross-country ski season and uh, because it sits there up out of the way and there's no waistband it gives good freedom of movement for your arms and I'm hoping that I'll be able to use it as a kind of day pack when I'm doing cross-country skiing through exactly this kind of area in uh, you know, the, the coming months. Now I already had this uh, duffel bag thing anyway, which I was just using to keep a sleeping bag in. And it clips perfectly onto uh, this attachment here, as you can see. So, you know, in, when you're winter camping, a really large proportion of what you're taking with you is actually your sleeping gear. You don't need too much more other than what you take in the, in the summer. Okay, well, as I was saying, as you can see, it sits up nice and high, uh, leaves your waist area completely free, so you can, uh, you know, you can wear things around your belt if you had a good utility belt. You can wear plenty of extra gear on there if you want to, water bottles, knives, and so on. Gives full freedom of movement, and uh, this thing it has virtually no weight, 
but does kind of balance things up a little bit. Pops off very easily. You can clip it off like that. No trouble at all. Just give you a good look at the, uh, the, the pack. As you can see, the main feature to compensate for the lack of uh, the belt, you have this very, very strong chest strap across there. Now, obviously, it takes a little bit of adjustment to get it to sit just right for you, but um, I kind of prefer it. Once you're there, it, it, it's locked in place. Often, when you have a belt on, you need to constantly be, you know, jamming it down. Another good feature of this. <coughs> Excuse me. Really heavy duty grab handle. So picking it up and throwing it around, that's fine. And really excellent, excellent uh, straps here. Thickly padded. And they're, they're kind of splayed, much more splayed than you see on some other packs. It helps to retain it across your shoulders. Um, it doesn't look the most elegant. And it means that when it's standing on its own, you have these things kind of flapping around all over the place. But um, I think it's pretty much worth it. Pretty much worth it. Uh, extra straps here to take some of the load. Um, there are a few other features which aren't so good. Um, but what I'll do is I'll carry on to where I'm hoping to make up just a, a very brief camp. And have, some, uh, have some soup or something. And I'll show you the pack in detail with some of the pluses and some of the minuses. But the reason why I've got these both with me today is there seems to be a lot of Dutch army surplus hitting the stores at the moment. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, a lot of it is really, really excellent quality. So I'm going to show you a couple of those items, which I, I strongly recommend. Um, as you can see, the, the uh, camo pattern is uh, very similar to, if not identical to, um, the British uh, woodland camouflage as well. Um, anyway, that's enough of me yakking. I've got to make uh, a couple of kilometres uh, down to what I think will be a, a nice little camping place, and then we'll go through the bag in a bit more detail. Okay. I'm just off the trail for a second, and uh, I noticed this, which is pretty extraordinary. As you can see, there's this large granite boulder here. And kind of growing over the top of it, <laughs> we have this tree. It's kind of extending its roots all the way across the top. It's kind of throwing an arm over the top of the boulder. Pretty unusual sort of formation. Nice thing to well, see. Well, as you can see, we've made it to the objective. It's this uh, riverside you know, campsite picnic place. Uh, predictably, we're the only people here. But I'm thinking that in the winter, this might be a good place to come snowshoe in. It'll be completely um, isolated, I think, other than you might be able to get there by boat. But it should be a good, easy place to set up camp in the winter, a snowshoe camp. Anyway, I'll set up as well, get a um, little bit of uh, bullion on the boil, and uh, we'll take a look in detail at this um, uh, backpack and the you know, combination. I mean, one thing I have noticed while I've been hiking is uh, obviously the um, front pack here, the duffel bag. It does restrict your view you know, down to your feet. Um, so, I mean, really, you should be looking further than you know, a metre or two ahead anyway, so it's not too much of a drawback. Um, <clears throat> and in, uh, if I am snowshoeing, skiing, um, it shouldn't be a problem at all, because then you really should be looking further ahead than you shouldn't be looking at your feet at all. But that's something to bear in mind, so using it in these kind of conditions, um, yeah, certainly you need a walking stick, and you just need to take a bit more note than usual of where you are um, putting your feet. Obviously, if you're coming to a log and you need to climb over a log or something, then you should uh, unclip it. It's easy enough to unclip from one side, like this. You can unclip it, swing it out of the way, climb over the log, clip it back up again. As you can see, we've got a nice little spot here. 
I'll turn around and give you the view and we'll set up a little mini camp and do the proper review. We find ourselves on a nice little bluff up above the river getting a few little bits of sun dark clouds as well where they can't really make its mind up but we'll set up a little shelter here and then do a full review of the uh, bag Okay, so here we are. I've moved down from that bluff we saw a little bit earlier on just because um, it was a bit dark there, so what, what light we have, we'll have here. Just give you a quick uh, look at the dimensions. This is about both the bag and the, the duffel are both about kind of 18, 20 inches tall, I guess. The duffel bag is, is quite simple. There's a couple of nice grab handles on there and then a full length zip. It's a Cordura type material, really, really strong. You can just stuff whatever you want in there, it's not going to bust out. You've got carry handle on the end as well, so that's a good, a good, good piece of kit in its own right. Now, the bag itself, okay, as I said, it's not, it's not the biggest in the world, and it's also pretty narrow. Um, but I wanted something small, compact, <coughs> and above everything else, that's going to ride high on the shoulders. And for that, it seems to fit the uh, fit the bill. So these side pockets just have uh, you know, good quality clip fasteners, button fasteners, steel buttons. Uh, as you can see the, I don't know, the, I guess I was a bit ungenerous earlier on, there may be about four litres each side. Got a water bottle and some cup in that one, there's still plenty, plenty of room in there. Uh, lots of these molly uh, points all the way around the top there I mean I don't use molly stuff very much but if you do want to wedge stuff in there that's great all the clips and uh, and so on are really really tough I know a lot of the Dutch Army bags are made by low Alpine which is a pretty good make don't know if these are but they're it's, it's certainly high quality uh, manufacturing uh, you know it's a good quality uh, rip stop they're using as well all the uh, tapes and everything are really really tough so it feels like you couldn't really you could not rip this thing apart Speaking of ripping apart, this is a curious feature. You've got this Velcro pocket in the lid. Uh, there's no other fastener on there. There's no zip or anything. Um, you can shove things in there and it's kind of uh, waterproof on the top. It's uh, plasticized, so it should be pretty waterproof provided the rain's coming from, uh, from above. Yeah, it's curious that thing. Just tap it back up together. Now, it has these kind of elasticated straps um, inside the lid as well, which I don't like. I assume it's for, I don't know, you could roll up a tarp or something and stick it in there, but it also seems to pull the lid, you know, close, pull it down a bit too much. So I think I might cut those off and just have a little bit less tension there in the lid. A good uh, drawstring, and again, you can see, you know, good steel rivets all the way along, uh, grommets rather. Now, I'm going to take the camera and give you a look inside in a moment, but uh, first of all, one thing, there's a pocket in here, tell you what, I'll bring it, I'll bring the camera over. And you can see where we really are. As you can see, it's not a very wide opening, it's a... Uh, you know, this is a this is a small pack. This is not a this is not an expedition massive expedition pack. At the back, we have these uh, fasteners, which enclose a little pocket at the back. Now, inside there, if you do get one of these things, make sure you've got a mat. It should come with a mat, a standard. It's a foam pad. It's actually worth you know worth a little bit of money itself, and really really useful. It gives structure to the back of the pack, but of course, you know, you can use it for kneeling on, you can use it for or any, any number of things. It's very, very thick, very, very heavy duty, really good piece, uh, piece of uh, kit in its, own, in its own right. There you can see the label as well, KL, which I guess is, is the, uh, that's the um, uh, Dutch Army, 
1995, manufacturer Sanetex. Now whether Sanetex has anything to do with low alpine, I don't know, but they've done a good job of manufacturing this. Now, the, the silliest thing about this whole pack, and I'm sure that anyone who was in the Dutch Army can get, tell me the reason for this, is that when it comes, as well as this pocket at the back, there's another flap goes across here. I don't mind that too much, I've stuffed some items in there. But then in the front portion, it's divided into two. Now, I assume there's, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to hold a mortar rounds or, you know, bottles of some sort, I don't know. But that severely restricts the uh, uh, adaptability of the pack. So the first thing I did was cut that free. <coughs> Excuse me. So that we have another reasonably large um, section there. What I might do is actually cut down one side of um, this central flap as well. And then I can move the flaps around as I want to use them or remove them entirely. Now, inside here I have the other Dutch Army item which uh, I possess, which is really, really excellent, which is the poncho. The same camo, again, really, really well manufactured. Fits really snugly in the back there. What I'll do now is I'll set that up and um, just set it up in a quick formation so you can have a look at that. But this, combined with this pack, I think is uh, gives you a lot of the stuff that's going to be necessary for, for a day hike or a, you know, a day snowshoeing. And uh, yeah, if you attach this as well, well obviously that makes overnight as an option. It is possible to attach this to the back of the pack as well, <coughs> you know, so that it's sitting on there and then you clip it on to the, um, the lid like that. Not sure what the point is with that though really, I mean you're really going to be better off just taking a bigger pack if that's what you intend to do. Okay. Uh, more molly attachment points around the bottom. There's drainage holes as well. Um, this is not brand new, but it's in pretty good condition. It's held up to a lot of abuse. And as I said earlier on, these straps are um, one of the, the real strong points. Um, I've seen weaker straps than this on full-size Bergens. This, in case you're wondering, is just a, a flap at the back. <clears throat> All the Dutch gear seems to have this, so where I guess you just put your ID uh, ID card in there, your name, whatever. Doesn't really seem to serve much other purpose. Okay, I'll get the tarp set up, um, get some soup on the boil, and I'll get back to you soon. Okay, here you can see we've got just a very, very quick setup of the poncho stroke uh, tarp. Provides pretty good coverage. Um, got these nice, again, metal grommets and these poppers as well along um, two sides. I'll show you the purpose of those in a moment. But uh, all corners and along the sides we have these really strong grommets which are really very, very good indeed. It's high quality. There's the um, hood, just tied out of the way. But this is easily big enough to um, crawl under with all your gear and uh, as you can see the camo works quite well too it's pretty unobtrusive so a very good piece of gear I'll just show you, show you a little bit more functionality of it uh, in the next segment as well okay I mentioned that we had poppers along one side well two sides of the uh, poncho and uh, this is what they're for. You'll notice before we start that there's also this integral pocket here. When you're hanging it up as a tarp, uh, you can put very light items in there. I wouldn't put anything heavy in there because it's attached to the, the actual skin of the tarp itself. But another purpose, another use for that will become clear in a moment. We placed our sleeping bag here in the middle and then it's quite a simple matter to just fasten these poppers. Again, it's all steel construction, metal construction, good heavy duty stuff. So, you know, if it's not necessary to build a, uh, a shelter as such, or we want to be 
up and gone in an instant. Then we can just have this, well, it's really a ready-made bivy bag. Okay, you're gonna need to um, put a piece of string here through the bottom to uh, tie it all together, but that's pretty straightforward. Stop the worst of the damp getting in. Just you know, one piece of string will tie that all down. Like so. And then we've got a nice bivy. Now, the pocket that I mentioned, there is a way that you can fold the whole thing up and it disappears into this nice square pocket, but it's, it's so incredibly complex and frustrating to do, I, I generally just fold it as it is. But when you do have it set up like this, you make sure this is at the head end. You just can stuff this with, uh, you know, your scarf or whatever you have to hand. Just put a scarf in there and... You know, you've made yourself a pillow. So you then have a pillow which is resting on top of the... Um, ground sheet, your sleeping bag inside that, and you've got your um, bivy bag on top of that. So, you know, very, very flexible piece of kit. Final uh, iteration that I'll show you is uh, the most obvious one of all, the poncho itself. So let's uh, get that together as well. Okay, so we have the uh, poncho on its own again. Should also mention that uh, because of the studs along the sides, if you've got more than one of these, you can clip them together uh, and make a really, really big car. So worth getting a couple of these, I think, and you've doubled the size of your possible coverage. You could make a quite a sizable tent uh, with two of these. Using the poncho itself is, uh, well, very, very easy. <laughs> it's just a matter of throwing it on, I mean, quite literally. There we go. That's all there is to it. You've got a drawstring hood with toggles on as well. So you can pull that down if necessary. There's also uh, the drawstring around the waist, that's a part of the waist, which you can use as well. You just try and untangle it. Oh, I'll take my word for it. There is a there is a cord in here, it's a bit tangled up, which you can tie around your waist, cinch it down a little bit. It doesn't run around the um, outside of it doesn't run around the tarp itself but you can use it to put around your body inside so that it doesn't flap so much. Size-wise, well, very good. It's about 180 centimeters um, square. And uh, I've used this in very, very heavy rain. It's never let me down. It's really, really good. It's nice and tough and uh, yeah, highly recommended. So in summary, this um, Dutch kit is really good value for money. In terms of price, I paid equivalent of about 30 US dollars for the backpack. That's actually slightly over the odds, but it's in very good condition. You can get them for nearly half that price um, if they're a bit more battered. As I mentioned, it will require a few mods. The poncho itself cost me less than $20, um, and I'm certainly going to be getting another one of these. I really, it's one of my favorite pieces of kit. The uh, duffel sack, that was very cheap, that was about $5. So you add all that together, you're pretty nicely set up for you know, day hiking, as I said, hopefully for um, snowshoeing and skiing as well with that nice high ride on the shoulder blades. Well, time to make that suit that I keep promising myself. I'm gonna shut you off now. I hope this has been of some use. As I say, there's a lot of Dutch surplus hitting the stores at the moment, so keep an eye open for it. And uh, it's all good quality gear. When you see this um, camouflage, doesn't necessarily mean the Brits are coming. It might mean the Dutch are coming as well.
Okay, take care and I'll speak to you soon.